Yeah, me and Toz, you know, we grew up in Byron together, surfing, hanging out, doing board riders, as well as, you know, local events and things like that. We've always surfed together. It's good to have another buddy who's just as keen to, you know, do little missions up the coast. Packed up his little van this morning and fanged it up here on the highway, come for a day up surfing on the superbank. Pretty short trip up, I think it was about 45 minutes or so, and we sort of rocked into town early mid-morning after that work crowd and had, yeah, a bunch of little fun waves. For me, coming up here over the years, it's, it's not something that happens all the time, only just, you know, a handful of times a year, but it's an incredible wave and this is sort of a breeding ground for a lot of professional surfers and world champs, so it sort of speaks for itself in a lot of ways. Cooley itself, you know, it's a pretty crazy little place for waves. There's an abundance of setups. It sort of starts all the way around the Devo. You've got a, a peaky, wedgy beach break. It gets quite heavy and hollow at times. And it comes around to Froggies, which is behind the rocks there, and there's a lot of backwash and sort of funky ones, but it can be a heap of fun at times. Moving down to the point, you've got Often a bit of backwash off the top there, but also it builds up a lot of sand and is sort of the start of what is an incredible wave. And you get a tube section off the top, down into a few turns, through Little Marley. Into Rainbow usually gets pretty fun, and then once you hit Greeny and the Cooley bit, starts kind of taking off, and Kira's kind of the gem of the crown. You know, you can get some pretty long, throaty, drawn out pits there. When that's on, it's a pretty pretty special day, so I think everyone enjoys Kerry when it's on the most. I've had some pretty memorable sessions. The last time I surfed out here, I actually got one from next to the rock to the big rock. That was a really long one. They're pumping sand and the bank's good. All you need is a bit of east in the swell and pretty much going to be getting little one foot, two foot screamers. And if it's bigger, you can be getting stand tall screamers. If we get lucky, we could be, we could be on a little later. We'd be on for a couple of down the line gems. It would be nice. It's such a dreamy day. Any time snappers, you know, a bit crowded or not quite doing it, you have the opportunity to pop over to D-Bar and see what you so away. A couple of peaky pits. Me and Todd's got a couple of fun ones. Pretty dreamy little, little session. Headed down to Cooley. Plenty of options down there, eating wise. Hooked into some grub and had a bit of a suss of the bank from down Cooley Way and noticed, you know, the tide was dropping and there was a few tubes starting to reel on down the point. Look at these little things going wide. It actually looks like pretty fun. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> the paddle out at off the point at Snapper is on its day it can be pretty tricky and you've got to sort of, I don't know, I always tend to opt the easy way and paddle through the little keyhole there, but. You see everyone else sprinting along the rocks and launching themselves over the back. They probably do a lot less paddling than I do, so it's a good option if you know what you're doing. Day and you're a bit sunburned, parched, worn out. It's pretty nice to just be able to head straight on into the deck at the surf club and tuck into a fresh skewy. It was really cool to do the little trip up here and 
have some fun waves together and share a few beers and some food and good time. <laughs>